Assalamu alaikum. Uh, today's topic in the series of online lectures is malaria. And uh, my name is Muhammad Awas, one of the assistant professor in pediatrics. Introduction. So you are all familiar with the malaria. Uh, malaria is an acute and chronic illness characterized by uh, intermittent fever, uh, rigors and chills, sweats, fatigue, anemia and splenomegaly. And uh, most malarial deaths occur among young infants and young children. Etiology. Malaria is caused by intracellular plasmodium protozoa uh, transmitted to humans by female Anopheles mosquito. So this is the causative agent plasmodium and uh, which is a protozoa and Anopheles mosquito is the vector. So malaria also can be transmitted through blood transfusion, uh, use of contaminated needles and from a pregnant woman to her fetus. This is uh, the geographical presentation, uh, geographical distribution of the uh, malaria uh, endemic areas in which the malaria is more common. So this is the life cycle of plasmodium and uh, as you can see in the diagram, the mosquito, uh, infected mosquito bites a healthy person and injects porozoites inside the uh, body of the uh, healthy human and there are two cycles exoerythrocytic and erythrocytic cycle inside the human body. In exoerythrocytic cycle primarily the sporozoites uh, enter the liver cells and they form a structure called schizone and which release a uh, lot of uh, trophozoites inside the bloodstream and these trophozoites uh, enter in the uh, red blood cell. A few of them again make the schizont, but few of them will make the gametocytes. Schizont will uh, rupture the RBCs and the rigors and chill symptoms will occur in the patient, while gametocytes are taken up by the mosquito. And uh, in the gut of mosquito, the microgamete entering in, enters in the microgamete and forms zygote, which is called oocyanete, and then it becomes oocyst, which is uh, released uh, uh, in the uh, saliva of uh, mosquito when it bites to the healthy person again. So four important pathologic processes have been identified in patients with malaria which are fever, anemia and immunopathological events and tissue anoxia. Fever occurs when erythrocytes rupture and release merozoites into the circulation. Anemia occurs due to hemolysis, sequestration of erythrocytes and spleen and other organs and bone marrow suppression. And the immunopathological events that have been documented in patients with malaria include excessive production of pro-inflammatory cytokines. Cytoadherence of infected erythrocytes to vascular endothelium occurs in falciparum and that's why it can lead to the obstruction of blood flow and capillary damage result in vascular leakage of blood, protein and fluid and tissue and all that. That's why falciparum um, malaria can be lethal in some condition. In addition, hypoglycemia and lactic acidemia are caused by anaerobic metabolism of glucose. The cumulative effects of these pathologic processes may lead to cerebral, cardiac, pulmonary, intestinal, renal and hepatic failure, so multi-organ failure. Uh, so coming to the clinical manifestations and as in all infections, there is usual concubation period which is different in different species of uh, plasmodium for for example 9 to 14 days for P falciparum 18 to 40 days for P malaria. The incubation period can be as long as 6 to 12 months for P vivax. It can also be prolonged for patients with partial immunity or incomplete chemoprophylaxis. A prodrome lasting for 2 to 3 days is noted in some patients before parasites are detected in blood. Prodromal symptoms include headache, fatigue, Nerexia, myalgia, slight fever and pain in the chest, abdomen and joints. The classical presentation of uh, malaria consists of uh, paroxysm of fever, alternate periods of fatigue but otherwise relative wellness. Febrile uh, paroxysm are characterized by high fever, sweats, headache as well as myalgia, back pain, abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, pallor and jaundice. Whereas this coincides with the rupture of schizons which I have already discussed and uh, periodicity is less apparent with falciparum than others. Children with malaria often lack typical paroxysm and have non-specific symptoms including fever. So maybe low grade but is often um, 
greater than 1 or 4 degree Fahrenheit. Headache, drowsiness, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea and distinctive physical findings on examination are saplanomegaly but you can find also hepatomegaly and pallor. Falciparum is the most severe form of malaria and associated with higher density parasitic and number of complications like severe anemia and uh, there can be cerebral malaria, acute renal failure, respiratory distress from metabolic acidosis, algid malaria, so also severe malaria and bleeding diathesis. The diagnosis of plasmodium palsy paramalaria is in the non-immune individual constitutes a medical emergency. Severe complications and death can occur if inappropriate therapy is not instituted properly in a non-immune individual. So WHO criteria for severe malaria is impaired consciousness, prostration, respiratory distress, multiple seizures, jaundice, hemoglobinuria, abnormal bleeding, severe anemia, circulatory collapse and pulmonary edema. Congenital malaria. As per name, congenital malaria is acquired from the mother prenatally or perinatally in the serious problem in tropical areas. In endemic areas, congenital malaria is an important cause of abortions, miscarriages, stillbirths, premature births, IUGR, intrauterine growth rest restrictions, and neonatal deaths. Diagnosis. Uh, I mean, the diagnosis of malaria is established by identification of organisms on gingival stain smears of peripheral blood or by rapid you know, chromo, uh, chromatographic assay. Like both thick and thin smear should be examined. Uh, along with thick and thin smear, the test, the uh, binoxinol malarial test is approved by the US FDA and rapid, uh, for a rapid diagnosis of malaria. PCR is even more sensitive than microscopy, but is technically more complex. Differential diagnosis of malaria includes Viral infections such as influenza, hepatitis, dengue fever, sepsis, pneumonia, meningitis, encephalitis, and a long list. Treatment. General recommendations for pharmacological treatment of malaria are as follows. Falciparum malaria, quinine based therapies with quinine or quinidine sulfate plus doxycycline or clindamycin or pyrimethamine sulfur doxin combination. Alternative therapies are artemether, lumifentrine, etovacuone. Uh, Proguanil or mefloquine. Falciparum malaria, in which uh, areas where there is uh, chloroquine susceptibility, we use chloroquine uh, as well. But in area where there is resistance to uh, chloroquine, we use alternative like uh, artemethylumifentrine, for example. Uh, PYVX, PO whale malaria, we use chloroquine plus primaquine. In PLP uh, and uh, plasmodium malaria, malaria, we use chloroquine. In uh, nol C malaria, which is a, a newer species of uh, plasmodium, same recommendation as for uh, uh, plasmodium falciparum malaria. What is cerebral malaria? Cerebral malaria is defined as the presence of coma in a child with uh, falciparum parasitemia and an absence of other reasons for coma. Repeated seizures and hypoglycemia is common. Physical findings may be normal or may include high fever, seizures, Muscular twitching, rhythmic movement of the head or extremities, contracted or unequal pupils, retinal hemorrhage, hemiplegia, absent or exaggerated deep tendon reflexes, and positive, positive babinistic sign. Lumbar puncture reveals increased pressure and cerebrospinal fluid protein with new, no pleocytosis, normal glucose, normal protein. Treatment of cerebral malaria other than adding little medication is largely sportive and includes evaluation and treatment of seizures and hypoglycemia. Although increased intracranial pressure has been documented in some children with cerebral malaria, treatment with mannitol and corticosteroid has not proved in outcome of these children. What is algid malaria? Algid malaria uh, or circulatory collapse is a rare complication that manifests as hypotension, hypothermia, rapid weak, pulse, shallow breathing, pallor, and vascular collapse. Death may occur within hours. Severe malaria is occasionally impaired by bacteremia, which may have been the cause of some of the cases previously referred to as algid malaria. What is tropical splenomegaly syndrome? Tropical splenomegaly syndrome is a chronic complication of falciparum malaria in which massive splenomegaly persists after treatment of acute infection. The syndrome is characterized by marked splenomegaly, hepatomegaly, anemia and elevated IgM level. Prolonged antimalaria prophylaxis for at least several years is required to treat the syndrome of the child remains in a malaria endemic area. Spleen size gradually regress, regresses on antimalarial prophylaxis but often increases again if prophylaxis is stopped. 
how we prevent malaria malaria prevention consists of reducing exposure to infected mosquitoes number 1 and number 2 chemo prophylaxis how we will reduce the exposure and um, how we will do the chemo prophylaxis we will discuss so reducing uh, exposure travels to endemic area should remain in well screened areas from dusk to dawn when the risk of transmission is highest they should sleep uh, during uh, Uh, they should sleep under permethrin treated mosquito netting and spray insecticide indoors at sundown uh, during the day the travelers should wear clothing and covers the arm and legs with trousers tucked into shoes or boots mosquito repellent should be applied to thin clothing in exposed areas of skin with application repeated every 1 to 2 hours agent should not uh, be taken outside from dusk to dawn but if her uh, risk for exposure is there a solution with 25 to 35% D E uh, D E E T uh, should be uh, applied to the exposed area except for the eyes, mouth, or hands. Hands are excluded because they are often placed in the mouth. Chemo prophylaxis is necessary for all visitors to and uh, residents of to- uh, tropics who have not lived there since infancy, including children of all ages. Uh, healthcare providers should consult the latest information on resistant patterns before prescribing prophylaxis for their patients. Chloroquine is given in the few remaining areas of the world free from chloroquine resistant malaria strains in areas where chloroquine resistance uh, we give atorquine proguanil mefloquine or doxycycline and chemoprophylaxis this is the table uh, which i have already discussed thank you very much if you have any question you can ask in the youtube section of the lecture thank you